To start this video, I have to outline who the future Olympic hosts are going to be for both the Summer and Winter Games. So, without any further delay, they are Paris, Milan, Los Angeles, and Brisbane. Seriously? So, for those of you who don't know, my home city of Brisbane will be hosting the 2032 Olympics. And being the dork that I am, I decided to do two things about this. So the first was that I decided to train for it. And the second was I decided to research whether hosting an Olympics is actually a good thing for a city and the country once everything is done and dusted. So let's get into the results. Well, first up, it's not such a simple question. A great asset can be a horrible investment if you overpay for it, just as a horrible liability can be a great investment if you underpay for it. And the same is true for the Olympics. So what it really comes down to is how much we actually spend for getting the Olympics up and running, and also how much we generate back in as well. Yeah, that's a fair enough statement, but can't you just look at how previous Olympic host cities have fared and whether they made a big profit or loss from the Olympic investment? Well, yes and no. Unfortunately, calculating whether you've made a profit from the Olympics is actually a very subjective exercise, meaning that you can sort of change the variables to whoever suits you. If you just want the hard numbers, and these are from Wikipedia, the Sydney Olympics had a $2.1 billion loss. Athens had a $14.5 billion loss. Beijing profited $146 million. London basically broke even. Rio had a $2 billion loss. And also a large part of it was due to the Zika virus. And Tokyo, despite the COVID virus, had a $3.3 billion profit. I'll talk about the Beijing Olympics in 2008. They spent $42 billion in the lead up their Olympics. However, what is not so widely known is that $22 billion of that was spent on non-sporting infrastructure. So upgrades to the airport, upgrades to the highways, upgrades to the public transport systems. This is money that's probably going to get spent anyway, and just the Olympics just basically brought that day forward. And furthermore, they also spent $11 billion on a big environmental cleanup project. And so out of all of Beijing's Olympic costs there, you can argue that 78% of Beijing's Olympic costs would have been spent anyway for upgrading the city. And for Beijing, this is not a once-off, this is basically every Olympic host city. In fact, Sochi, the recent Winter Olympic host, they spent $43 billion on non-sporting infrastructure upgrades alone. And so, yes, you can argue that hosting an Olympics may be good for diverting national funding from being shared between all the cities to the top favourite for national spending projects. But outside of that, you can argue that a lot of Olympic spending was money that probably happened anyway. So, how does all of this fare for Brisbane? Well, we do have a couple of things going for us that are working in our favour. And that is that we've hosted two Commonwealth Games before. And on top of that, we've also done our part in hosting a Rugby World Cup. And before the Olympics start in 2032, we would have done our part in hosting two Rugby World Cups. So a lot of our sporting infrastructure actually already exists. So, when other cities have to host an Olympics, they have to build infrastructure from scratch. Whereas in Brisbane, for the majority of the infrastructure that we have to invest in, instead of having to build it from scratch, we basically just have to do some small renovations just to bring it into the modern age. So that's going to slash our costings way down compared to other Olympic hosts. In fact, getting many uses out of a venue, we're not the first country to think of this. Brazil put in a bid to host the 2014 Soccer World Cup and the 2016 Olympics, knowing that a lot of the infrastructure and a lot of the sports stadiums could be reused for both purposes so basically they'll be getting double the revenues for their single expense. And so it is a great strategy and if it wasn't for the Zika virus it actually would have really played off in Brazil's favour. But another smart thing that Brisbane is doing to bring down the cost of hosting the Olympics is that we're sharing the load of some of our neighbouring cities. So we're actually spreading the games as far west as Toowoomba and as far north as the Sunshine Coast and as far south as the Gold Coast. So in reality it's kind of four cities together that are hosting the Olympics and just Brisbane being the main one. And we're even hosting some preliminary events in Sydney and this applies for the athletes villages as well. They'll be spread around according to these venues. It won't just all be in one central location. And with this as well, as I was talking about Brazil before, we're also doing our part to host the 2027 Rugby World Cup. So that'll be additional benefit for the money that we're having to spend on our infrastructure. So the question remains, am I a subscriber to the fan base of hosting an Olympics in Brisbane? Yes, I am a subscriber because I like the fact that we're hosting it. Do you see what I did there? And what do we need to build and what don't we need to build? Well, I'm sure everyone is aware of the Gabba, which is a big stadium in South Brisbane. 
Well, that's going to be the main athletic stadium and also the main stadium for opening and closing ceremonies and all that. We basically did not need to build infrastructure for the athletics, the swimming, the basketball, the cycling, the equestrian, the rugby sevens, the gymnastics, the hockey, the shooting, the fencing, the handball, the pentathlon, the rowing, the golf, the yachting, tennis, the soccer, which is going to be at Suncorp Stadium, uh, the judo, the volleyball, the weightlifting and the mountain biking. So all of these venues already exist. They did not need to be built. So what do we actually need to build? We'll need to build venues for water polo, archery, whitewater rafting, boxing, beach volleyball, road cycling, and that's basically it. We already have the venues for the rest of the sporting events. So okay, we hardly need to spend anything on our sporting venues, but what about our non-sporting infrastructure? So say our public transport, our roads, our airports, things like that. Well, as it turns out, Brisbane has been on a bit of a spending splurge recently anyway, and this is before we even knew that we're hosting the Olympics. So we have been spending a ton of money on upgrading our roads and improving our airports, and we have many projects that are going on as it is. So with looking 10 years into the future, Brisbane is going to be hosting a heavily discounted games because we do not have to spend a fraction of what other Olympic hosts have had to spend on upgrading their infrastructure. So with that, so long as the revenues are not discounted as well, theoretically, hosting the Olympics should be a great investment for Brisbane. And for those of you who are thinking about or are real estate investors in Brisbane, you're probably thinking, okay, great, so it might be great for the city, but how is it going to go for me as a real estate investor? Well, for that, I have to look at historical data. And unfortunately, we have very limited data to get to go off because our other Olympic hosts are either a very much top tier world city and real estate prices are just sky high anyway, or it is a developing country which is basically trying to build the, build the way into the first world. And so Brisbane doesn't really fit into many of those categories. In fact, the only real comparison that we can even realistically use which is a fair comparison is how the Sydney real estate market went from 1996 to 2001. And so how were the Sydney results? Well, between 1996 to 2001, Sydney real estate market grew by 88%. So that is an average of 17.6% growth per year. And its 25 year average is about 7.6%. And so it is about 10% higher than what it normally would be if they weren't hosting an Olympics. For hosting in an Olympics, because Brisbane has the advantage of already having the infrastructure in place, uh, theoretically, uh, hosting the game should be a very beneficial uh, economic event for us. That's basically everything I have to say.